God bless you all. Welcome back, sisters. In this video, we want to give more clarification on the placing of hair because many women need more clarification. Some are still doubting. So by the grace of God, we want to delve a little bit more into it. And we want to also answer the question, should a Christian woman shave her hair? So stay tuned and may God bless you in Jesus' name. When God gives us commandments, he is not giving us commandment for commandment's sake. Okay? He is giving us commandments for righteousness sake. And so when God says don't do something, it's not because you know he wants to keep you in bondage. No. It's because that thing is unrighteousness and you will give the enemy the chance to accuse you on the judgment day with that thing. And so we are children of God and he has given us very great promises. The promise that we will live with him forever. We are going to rule with him. Okay, we are going to live in the heavenly places. That place where the devil once was and was cast down. And this devil and the demons that came with him that were all cast down. They don't want anyone to go there because they know what is there. They know the great things that are there. So they will do whatsoever they can to defile a christian a defilement okay is that thing that god doesn't like so it can be as tiny as tiny could be it could be very 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 tiny thing that is what the lord is calling sport so if the sport is found on us the enemy will stand next to us on the judgment day to accuse us. And because God is so good, he wants to take those spots away from us. He wants to take those wrinkles away from us. Okay. And so if he is saying that don't do this, don't do that. He wants those things to go because those things are the things that the enemy is going to use against us. And that is why the Bible is saying, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all, all of it, okay? Oh, filthiness of the flesh. So the filthiness of the flesh has got to do with our outward appearance. The flesh, okay? The flesh has got to do with our outward look. Outward dressing and adornment. And spirit. Which has got to do with our heart. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So the holiness of God dictates that we should take good care of our body. We should mind the things we put on our body. We should mind the way we do our hair. We should mind the way we present ourselves to people outside. And then we should also work on our heart. Because what is in the heart is what is dictating what you put on your body. 
So I want to look classy today. The thought came from my heart that I want to stand out. I want everybody to see that I am the most beautiful lady in the room. That thought came from my heart. It came from inside of me, okay? But the moment God cleanses the heart, and I see that these things are all vanity. That that thought that I want to look classy is worldliness and God is against it. I will therefore dress in a way that will contract it, that thought of my past. And so in my past... I was that person that was saying, I am not going to repeat my clothes because I don't want to be known by a, clo by a dress that I'm wearing. I want to wear something new every single day that was coming from the state of my heart. My heart was corrupt and so that is how it was coming out, okay? But now I see that these things are vanity and so I don't dress that way anymore. I remember in school, there were two ladies. They were members of Deeper Life and they used to come to study at the place that we used to study. And they were very nice ladies. So, you know, they were not my friends, but, you know, like we would interact one or two things that's it okay and they were deeper life ladies and they appeared in so simple way that i never saw myself dressing that way those ladies had very simple hairstyle okay the hair was not left on like that. They dressed it in a neat and clean way. But it was, you know, I don't even remember how the hair was done. Okay. But I know that it was either a simple cornrow and this threading that they use either ceiling fan thread or the sewing thread in black in two strands which is not heavy to make the hair heavy or to bring attention to the hair there was nothing they were not using this shining um rubber thread the, the sparkling one no 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 they were using very simple thing that your mind will not even go on the hair and the way they dress i despised it in my heart it was not a way that i would ever want to dress yet the threading was part or is still part of deeper life dressing okay we call this dressing deeper life dressing but it is the christian dressing it is that dressing that is being recommended to christian and so we okay who are now coming into this path of righteousness and holiness we have example of godliness laid before us we have this example of women who profess godliness this example has been laid before us by our father in heaven pastor kumuyi has really allowed god to give him the understanding of how a christian woman should dress Okay, and they have brought it out. And so the foundation has been laid for us who did not have that background. And so now, revelation has come up. And many of us cast our things away. We turn our back on the, on the formal way of disobedience. 
the former last of our ignorance. We have rejected it. We didn't know that God didn't like it. We didn't know that we were on the broad way that leads to hell. And that is why we were wearing makeup. We were wearing jewelries. We were wearing trousers. That is why we were wearing um, hair extensions. We were wearing false hair. We did not know that even though these are called false hair, we didn't know that that false day was a big accusation to us. We were doing it in the former last of our ignorance. And by that we were children of wrath. We were marked with hellfire on our faces and we did not know that. And so God, in his wisdom, in his love, took some people to hell to show them that my daughters, these dressing, can you see, trousers, it is breaking the commandment of God. A woman shouldn't wear that which pertained unto a man. And what is that that pertained unto a man? It is the hosing and the breeches that when you go into the Bible, you will not find a single woman who wore it. So when we talk about the which pertains unto a man, that is the trousers. Okay. So you can see that they are saying that women were in hell for wearing trousers. You can really see that really, really, really this is true because it is contradicting. Wearing of trousers contradicts the word of God. Women were in hell for putting makeup on their faces, you can see that the Bible, what they are doing, contradicts the Bible because the Bible says, add not to it, lest he finds you a liar. The Bible says, and I know that that which God doeth, everything that God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it or anything taken away from it so we can see that makeup including cosmetic surgery cosmetic beauty they are all breaking the laws of god then we come to the false hair the false nails the false eyelashes okay the false boobs and the bombs these fake things, yeah, the falsehood there has condemned it. And you go to the Bible, okay, he says nothing that defiles or makes lies shall enter into the kingdom of God. Making lies, that is the falsehood. But you say, for me, I know that I don't put false hair on my hair. I buy the natural hair. Okay, the human hair, yours will be, and I know that the which God do it shall be forever. Nothing shall be put to it. Don't add somebody's hair onto your hair. And so, my sisters, revelation that came to change us, okay, to bring us to the path of righteousness. Is just an act of love from God. You can back it up with scriptures. You can go into it and you will really know that, wow, what I was doing, I was really, 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 really despising the work of God. I was sinning against God, but in my ignorance. But we know that ignorance of the law is no excuse. It's the same with God. And you can see the effect that it has had on you. When you stopped wearing makeup, when you stopped wearing trousers, when you stop wearing this naked clothing, you can see the effect that it has had on you. It has taken a lot of temptation from you. 
The eyes of men are no longer on you. When you go out, you know, you don't get people calling you and saying, can I take your number? My sisters, when I was in the world, okay, can I take your number? I will end up sleeping with them. That is what puts me into sleeping around, into immorality. Why was everybody calling me, okay? Why was I like a center of attraction for immorality? Because I was wearing the uniform of Harlot. So once you put on that uniform, you must work whether you like it or not. But God has helped us, okay, with revelation coming out to take these things away from us. Now you can see that you are walking on the path of righteousness. And so my sisters, the commandments of God or revelation that he has brought to us is in no way trying to put us in bondage, but rather to free us from the bondage of sin. Revelation that is from God, okay, is to relieve us from sin. And so you will know that that revelation that they came up with, that God says the women should cut their hair, the hair should remain low. You can see that it is not from God. It is a false revelation because the Bible clearly says that her long hair has been given to her for her covering. It is for her glory. The long hair is the glory of the woman. She is not supposed to cut it. The apostle knows it. So he was saying that a woman who refuses to cover her hair in the presence of God should as well shave it. If that shaving is a shame to her, then let her cover it. Cover the hair before God. So that shows us clearly that a woman's hair that has been cut down low, maybe after fashion, it is a shame to that woman. Somebody will ask, how about me? Okay, I have heard this holiness message. I don't want to miss heaven. I want, I love God and I want to serve God well. And so my hair was permed. And I have shaved it, okay, so that it should grow natural. How about me? My sister, you have done so well by shaving that permed hair off because that was not the texture that God gave you. Okay, so it's so good that you have shaved it off. Now, to prevent the shame, when you are outside, you have to cover the hair with scarf. That is women dressing. There is no man in the right mind of righteousness that will put scarf on his hair and be going up and down. You see those men and you know that they are not born again. Okay. So wearing the scarf, okay, is part of human dressing. And so you shaved your hair. No problem. Just cover it with her scarf when you go out to prevent that shame. So should a woman shave her hair? The Bible says it is a shame unto her. Now let's go to the plating of her. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. And before we read it, I would like you to put it at the back of your mind that God is not fighting you. Okay, the commandments of God is not to put you in bondage. It's not to put you in fear. For example, people are saying, don't eat this, don't eat that. Um, abominable food, abominable kitchenware, all these things are coming from the pit of hell to put you in bondage. 
to put you in fear. It is not from God because there is no scripture that you can use to back it up. That Old Testament law that was given to the Israelites not to eat this or that has been cancelled in Christ Jesus. They were being trained in obedience but we have the Spirit of God to help us in our obedience, okay? So our training is in a different way. That law was given only to the people of Israel. Okay? Those laws, don't eat this, don't wear mixed fabric, it has been cancelled, okay? The only thing that has not been cancelled is the moral laws. The moral laws in the Old Testament are still there because these are the things that we do that affect our own conscience or the conscience of other people. These are the things that we do that affect our righteousness or the righteousness of other people. Anything that we do that affects somebody or makes somebody to sin, maybe to make somebody lust after you or to make somebody covert, you know, something that, that stirs up sin in somebody, okay, comes under moral. And so the moral laws in the Old Testament still remain. And one of such laws is a woman shall not put on the which pertains unto a man because of the body shape of the woman. When the woman wears trousers, it brings out your shape and it causes the man to last. Okay, so that law is so there. Maybe you say, but I wear modest ones. Your modest one will fall under, flee from the appearance of evil. It is evil. Whether it's modest or immodest, it says, don't wear it. That trousers belong to the men. Okay. So there is nothing like female trousers and there is nothing like modest trousers. It all falls under disobedience to the word of God. Okay. And so my sisters, apart from these moral laws, all those laws about food, about fabric, they have all been cancelled in Christ. We are no longer under such ceremonial laws. God will not tell you, don't eat yam, don't eat rice, don't eat crayfish. These are coming from the devil. The devil has seen that people are changing. So he wants, he has paved another way and he has brought people. Oh, I had a revelation. I went to hell and I saw people who ate yam. They were there. I saw people and they will mention things that are not even sin. They were all in hell and is putting the believer in bondage of fear. He has not called us to fear, but to peace. God has called us to peace, my sisters, okay? First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with same facedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array but which becometh women professing godliness with good works that plating of hair is the same as broidered hair okay so you can see the nine and the ten okay look at it carefully you can see that it is forbidden something and it is recommending something okay what are the things that is being forbidden here it is forbidden broidered hair which means flamboyant hairstyles it means fashionable hairstyles it means the hair that is screaming for attention 
What else is it forbidden? It is forbidden gold or pearls, which stand for jewelries. What else is it forbidden? It is forbidden costly array, expensive things. And we know that expensive is relative. He did not put any price there to say that your clothing should not go above this figure. Okay. He did not say that. And so you are going to judge it in the spirit of modesty. The women adorn themselves in modest. The modesty is there. You are going to judge it in the spirit of shame facedness. So, my sisters, when we come here, what is forbidden, cancelled straight away, is jewelry straight away. What is forbidden, cancelled straight away, is the fashionable hairstyles, the unnatural hairstyles, Cancel straight away. No Christian can do weave on and say you are doing weave on in modest way. The braids that you put artificial or you put attachment to it, you can't do it in a modest way. No, 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 no. It is not yours. What God has done, nothing shall be put to it. And so you can't say, I have attached her to my hair and I've done it in a modest way. That is cancelled. But a woman will still have to wear clothes and a woman will still have to do her hair, style her hair. She should still keep her hair long for the long hair is given to her for glory, for her glory, for her covering. So she will still have to wear clothes and she will still have to do her hair, but we should do it in the spirit of modesty, in the spirit of shame -fistedness. Modesty, moderate. Moderate means not too expensive and not tarted in the middle, okay? taking into consideration the people around you and so the people around you what are they wearing you don't want to stand out as the classiest you don't want to stand out as the the most expensive you want to blend in with the people around you in your environment okay so what you will wear to a place where maybe the people there are not um, even working class people, okay, they are a little below, you know what to wear, to go there, so that you don't make people covet, you don't go and cause problems with this woman and her husband, because she was going to demand for what she saw in you, okay, and then you might find yourself in a place, okay, where the people there are working class, you will dress in that spirit of modesty and the spirit of shamefacedness. There is this shyness, okay, that God has given to us, this spirit of humility, okay, attached to the way you look. Those deeper life ladies that I used to despise, they look so humble, even in their head. There is nothing like high-mindedness attached to it. Okay, in the spirit of sobriety, self-control, nothing like pride attached to it. That is how we are supposed to do our hair. First Peter chapter 3 verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel the same thing that apostle paul was saying in the first timothy chapter 2 verse 9 apostle peter is saying the same thing okay he is forbidding something here and he is recommending something also here in the form what he is forbidden is the same thing that Apostle Paul is forbidden. What was that? Adorning of plating 
of the hair. That plating of the hair that is really done in the spirit of adornment. That you are decorating the hair. When they were writing this, okay, there were some women that were fixing some things in their hair to bring at attention to the hair. There were some women who were decorating the hair to the point that God had given prophecy to Isaiah about this women doing that and it's called well set hair that hair that is screaming for attention that is what they are calling plating of the hair that is what they are calling the broided hair okay the flamboyant hairstyle the fashionable hairstyle that hairstyle that is done in pride that is bringing glory to the woman instead of giving the glory to god when you see these ladies deeper life of old, how they used to do their hair, okay? And you ask the question, why are these people dressed in this way? Me, I can't dress like that too. They will say they are dressed in that way because of their church. Yeah? Who is the founder of mm -hmm. church? That is Christ Jesus. So, in essence, they are dressed in this way because of Christ. The glory is going to Christ. So, let somebody see you and say, why is this lady dressed in this way? They will say she is dressed in this way because of holiness. Who is holiness that is God? Where is the glory going to now? It is going to the God of holiness. And may his name be praised forever, even in our dressing and in our adornment, in the name of Jesus. And so, my sisters, that is it, okay? Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Okay, so can you see? Or of putting on of apparel is the apostle saying that now that you are a Christian, don't wear clothes again. No, 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 no. In that same way, is he saying now that you are a Christian, you should not keep that long hair, the long hair that is even given to us in the New Testament. Now that you are an African woman, you should despise your long hair and despise the ways that naturally we use to grow our hair. Is he saying despise it? No, still keep your long hair. Still do it in that way that helps you to keep it in that natural way, in that simple threading, okay? In that simple conro, keep it in that way. But how should you do it? Do it after the manner of the women who profess godliness. And I have already said that they paved the way for us. The deeper life people have paved that way. They were doing their hair. They were threading their hair and doing the conro. And when we were still in our sins... When we were in the world and we were following fashion, we were despising that kind of hairstyle that the deeper life are doing. Why? Because it, is, it was too simple for our liking. Because there was nothing flamboyant about it. There was nothing worldliness about it. So what God wants to arrest is the worldly fashion. Yeah, God is not fighting us. He is not fighting the woman. No, he is not putting us into bondage. But he wants us to be cleansed so that when we stand before him, the enemy does not accuse us with anything at all. Now, how should you thread your hair when a woman of God stands, okay, with this threading and a heathen woman also stands with the threading, you can see clearly which one is, is a godly woman. Nobody has to tell you by their fruits, you shall know them, okay, by the way they have 
threaded the hair, okay? You shall know them. Ideally, we will say use just one strand of the thread. And the thread is not this like wire. I've seen some people using like wire or, or like s something that looks like a wire, you know, it's thick. No, no, no. And it's not this thread that we use for crocheting. No, no, no. It's too heavy and it's too, it's too big. It's, it's going to be attachment in your hair. What we are talking about is this very thin, um, this thin thread that is called, they call it ceiling fan thread because of the shape or sewing thread okay sewing thread is an alternative if you don't have that one the sewing thread okay even that ceiling fan thread when you go to the market they will say the old old mama threading yeah they were using it godly women of old have used it in olden times and they have made it to heaven we thank God, we thank God, because we are now in a dispensation where he brings out revelation. And we know that there have been revelations of some godly women who were dressing in this deeper life dressing. And they were doing their hair, either plating or weaving, and they made it to heaven. And so we know that we are on the right way. How did they make their hair? after the women who profess godliness okay they did it okay using only um using two strands because the one strand okay so ideally it should be one strand but you can't use it to to play to thread the hair it will break you can try it it will break okay but if you try it and it's good for you you can use one please use one but if you find that it is breaking, then you can put two together, together to be two strand, okay? So you can double it to be two strand to thread your hair. And threading of hair like that is not heavy, it's not attachment. You are not leaving some loose there to thread on it to elongate the hair. No, 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 no. It's just the length of your hair, okay? But this thread is just helping you to dress it in a distant way and also to help you to have a long hair. Nothing like attention or attraction to wait. No, 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 no. There is nothing like worldliness to wait. No. So what God is arresting is falsehood and worldliness and also vain glory, okay? So there is nothing sinful attached to it, but it becomes a sin when you are putting three three strand four strand five strand six strand seven strand you are still working after the course of the world you are still being ruled by the prince of the power of the air that power that promotes worldliness you are still being ruled by it you are still under the spirit of disobedience okay my sisters okay so if you are doing yours in a godly style, there is nothing wrong, nothing sinful at all. And then please, when you are using the sewing thread, keep it in black, the color of your hair. When you are using white or blue or any other color, you are still after the manner of, of the world. Okay. When you are using wool, the crochet, to do your hair, you are still there in the manner of worldliness. So how do we judge this? Just look at the woman, okay? Is she looking modest? Is there any attention to the hair, okay? Does she look godly with the way she appears? Judge it for yourself. May the Lord bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me today. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.